Hi and welcome back to my channel. I'm Tony and as you know I'm building my M26 Persian tank. So we're pretty much done with the static build apart from putting the mud guards and the tracks back on and then obviously a lot of weathering detail to do on the tank itself. But um, to today's session is about starting to do some of the electronics and just uh, testing some of the drive, the drives and the uh, gun elevator um, and just to make sure that that side is working. So I want to get the drive motors connected tested and then i'll disconnect everything so then i know that it's good to put the tracks on and then we'll do another test with the tracks on so um but before i do that um I've obviously the last video i built the little armor packs uh, machine gun which is just incredibly beautifully detailed um and i was a little bit worried about the sort of the the connector to the uh on the turret for the machine gun and so what i've done is i've got a i went and get um a piece of five mil um uh, metal tubing which fits perfectly into the where the machine gun stand is here um and then i just sort of cleaned up and turned down a little bit of this this little uh, support here and then slid this over and glued it so because i need to be able to take this machine gun out every time if i need to get the turret out if i'm going to do some work on the elevator or the recoil um i mean I'll, i'm happy to better spin it round. Um, but once this is on, obviously, if I put this in permanently, it would be a, a disaster. So I just thought I'd show you the detail on this. I mean, it probably didn't come. I'll just zoom the camera in. Oh, terrible camera work, Tony. So this is it. As you can see, it's just beautifully made. I mean, it's just a piece of art, I think, from Armour Packs. And it's articulated, you know, to allow you to, to load the, the machine gun belt through there. Um, it can also be angled with a pin, but I've got it fixed like this. And I'll show you why in a minute. Um, and you've got access to the ammunition here. Um, and I'm really pleased how that sort of came out. And I just thought I'd show you that because you probably wouldn't have picked the detail of that up on the previous film. So now with that in, I'll just zoom back out. Sorry, guys. And here's my turret. And that just simply slides into position. Um, and looks amazing. I'm really, really pleased with that. And eventually, when I get my little character back from Churchill Creations, he'll be sitting in here and he'll be operating the machine gun. Um, so that's that. So anyway, today uh, I'm going to basically uh, test the, the, the electronics, as I said. Um, but the first thing I've done here is just connected my two batteries. I've charged them. I've conditioned them with my CTEC chargers. Um, and I've now connected them up in series, so negative to positive, and that gives me 24 volts. And we'll just uh, double check that. So I'll turn it around to on my test meter. Um, live to live, negative to negative. In fact, what I'll do, I'll see if I can show you that. If you can see that. So live to negative, and that should give me, there you are. It's running at 26 volts, so just over 12 volts each, which is about how you want it to be. So that's going to give me my 24 volts to drive the entire tank. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set everything up um, and do a bit of a bench test. I've taken, as you can see, I've taken all the elements of the tank off so I can get to the drive motors. Um, I'm not going to do any of the other installation. I'm just simply just doing a bench test today. However, I will put the gun elevator in and I'll probably put the turret rotation device in as well because I still don't have my smoke uh, recoil or um, uh, what else I can't remember sound that's it smoke recoil and sound packs just yet um, but I'm sure they'll be uh, arriving in the fullness of time um, but you know once I've got this set up uh, and we can you know it's very easy to add those elements to it so I've already bound my uh, receiver and radio set so that's all bound together um, and actually that was reasonably straightforward uh, I think the first time I did it in the Tiger it was more daunting than I than I put made out to be really but it's actually very straightforward so I've done that um, so we're all good to go uh, so I'll just reset the camera and uh, we'll get started Right, so we're just about ready to go. Uh, all we're doing at the moment is just testing the two drive motors. Uh, we'll go on and do the other bits shortly, but uh, just to talk you through the setup. So we have got the batteries that are wired in series. Uh, we've got the main power cable that comes with the kit now connected up to the batteries as uh, per the instructions. Um, but the only difference is I've got a I've got a, I've put a 60 amp breaker inline breaker with this. Sorry, the background I've got the doors open and the, there's a lot of bikers around today, which is brilliant. But um, 
uh, a lot of noise. So uh, yeah, so that's got an inline breaker now, 60 amp breaker. So in the event this ever, uh, if you like, develops a fault, this should trigger and break the power um, and uh, operate as intended. So that's then connected or up to the main relay cables. Uh, there's a cable that connects to that and there's a sort of relay switch here. And then it goes directly into the side of the power, the main power module. Then out of the main power module, you then connect up the motor control A, which is very clearly labeled. It's all labeled up on the box and on the leads. Um, so you shouldn't go wrong with that. Then we've got the two receiver cables. Um, and this is for drive, uh, you know, drive motor one and drive motor two. These are connected into the main receiver, which I've, as I said before, I bet I've really already bind to the radio set. That goes in channel two and three, whatever your preferences are. Now I haven't got this set up for single six drive at the moment, but that will happen. Um, and the only thing that needs to be done now is to connect up the two drive motor leads. Um, now, depending on which way you plug these in, you'll get a reverse or forward thrust with uh, when you when you operate the radio set so I'm going to go ahead and pop these on now um, and I'm going to try and do it the way I did the Tiger so hopefully we'll get forward drive straight away and that goes hopefully you can see that so these just slide on I've got no power to this do not power anything up until you've got everything connected and then just do a, a bit of a cross check before you do that because um, it's always worth just to make sure everything is connected as it should so they slide on they're snug as they should be you don't want these popping off because once they're in once they're on and you're driving the tank if it pops off it's gonna be a nightmare to get to so now let's just do a quick check before I turn any power on so we've got the drive motors connected to motor control a we have motor control a connected to the main power module We've got the two receiver cables connected to our radio receiver here uh, in channels two and three. We have the main relay switch connected directly into the power module, then the power lead going back to the batteries with an inline breaker, and then we've got the on and off switch. So now I'm happy with all that. I'm going to turn on the radio set first. This hasn't been calibrated or anything just yet, it's very early days. Uh, Right, okay, let's just go through that. So that's it. Um, now, I'm gonna turn, we'll just reset this breaker. So that's reset. And hopefully we'll be able to get some power. Turn that on, there we go. Power. And it's running at 26 volts, which is perfect. Uh, and it's running at, what's it, 97, 98, it's flicking between 97, 98%. Um, so now we've got power, it's powered up. Now the big question is, is it going to drive? Um, so I'm going to try the, okay, so that I'm driving. It doesn't really matter. You can actually see it. I don't know if you can see that. It's actually starting to rotate. So it's rotating the left sprocket. And this is rotating the right sprocket. So what we need to do is, I will change that because I want that to be the left and then the right for now. And then obviously when we do st single stick driving, we can get that working. So there we go. We can see that both sprockets are now at full speed. That gives me confidence now that I know the drive motors are working. There's no horrible sounds or anything like that. It seems to be operating exactly as I want it. I'll probably just swap these around. Um, and then at least I know now that I can confidently put the tracks on. So I'm going to go and get the um, gun elevator now and the uh, turret rotation motor and um, we'll get those connected up and do a test on those as well. So before I do that, sorry, before I do that, I'm going to turn the power off. I'm also going to kill the power from my breaker. Power's all off and then it's safe. So now I'll go and get the uh, turret motor and the uh, gun elevator and we'll test those as well. Right, so I know it looks like a mess, but, but that's, that's normal. Um, there's a lot of cabling and nothing's been tidied up and this is just a bench test. However, uh, we're now ready for to, to test the uh, turret motor, which is this incredible little motor here and the uh, gun elevator which is this motor here now obviously 
in the final, um, if, when everything's there, the recoil and the sound and everything else, there is a wiring loom that goes inside the turret, which is this thing here, which is this spaghetti of uh, cables here. Um, and actually what you would do is you would indirectly connect the um, elevator to this wiring loom. But for the purposes of the test, uh, we don't need that today and I don't have the recoil here as yet. So this is what they call power module or motor control, sorry, B. Um, and it's got a multitude of cables hanging off of that. And as you can see, everything's got, uh, sorry, I'll just get that in the camera. You can see that everything's labeled. So it's actually really straightforward and it's pretty much plug and play. So the very, very first thing is this connector here, sorry, this connector here gets connected into the main power module. Um, and I'll try and turn this around so you can see that on here are all the connectors and they're all fully labeled up so there shouldn't be any concerns about where, which cable goes to where this is clearly labeled up motion control b so i'm going to pop that in there nice snug fit as it should be um, and then it's simply just a matter of working out so even if you didn't know it's pretty obvious that that connects to this um, so that it can only go in one way and that's that so we're now connecting up the turret rotation so that's that and then we've got a, a simple uh, black to black and red to red male female connectors. So they're in there. And again, bear in mind, nothing is power. There's no power going to any of this. Don't try and do this live with power because you know you could blow things up. Um, and then the only other two things to do is to connect the little sort of RC cables to the, um, the main receiver. Now, if I remember rightly, I think I'll just double check. So this is the elevator, elevator and that goes to channel one. Just make sure we've got the cables the right way around, and we do. That goes into channel one. And then the turret rotation device and motor plugs into channel four. Now I'm just gonna move this away from the radio the transmitter itself because if it's too close it probably won't bind um, yeah and it looks like a right mess doesn't it but <laughs> it is what it is but obviously this is just a test so we're good so first thing I'm going to do now is just power up I know it's out of shop but I'm going to power up my transmitter and what we'll do now is I'll I'll get the breaker put that back in line and we'll turn the switch on and we have got power. And the radio set is bound with the receiver, so we're all good to go. So just check it. There we go, the motors. The motors are still working, which is good. Now the big test. Let's see if we can get that. Okay, there we go. You can see that the elevator is now moving. I mean this is on left to right on this receipt on this on here at the moment. It's just operating left and right but we'll sort that out when we do a bit of fine-tuning the whole purpose of this is just to test everything's working and it is as you can see and the turret rotation there we go you can see that operating so again we're using so that's it so we know now that everything is tested. Really happy the way that's gone. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just turn everything off. I'm gonna kill the breaker, turn the radio set off. And then we're good to start putting all these away. And the next step is gonna be, I'm going to um, install the tracks and then we'll do another test while the tracks are on and we'll take it from there. Right, so I've got the tracks on now. I've got them tensioned uh, equally both sides. I'm quite happy with how they feel. Um, I have done a bit of a test run, so I'm, ha I'm happy as they're, uh, uh, as they're currently set up. Um, obviously, when it goes on to um, a proper road test, uh, we we'll, may have to do some more adjustments, but for now, they're on. Um, so I'll just demonstrate now what they look like. So I'll just turn the radio on. Get the power. Reset the breaker, turn the power on. 
just waiting for that receiver to connect and it has so now hopefully we'll be able to see the tracks so again it's not on single stick operational but we can sort that out I'm quite happy with how that's all looking As you can see, I've just temporarily put the batteries inside just to stop all the leads um, from trailing over the tank. And I've already sort of decided that, obviously, if you think about the height of these batteries, um, they're not going to fit with the turret and everything else. So they're going to have to be laid on their sides, which I don't like to do. But I've checked um, with other builders, and that's exactly what they've done. So you turn the batteries on their side, so at least it doesn't interfere. It's going to be really congested in here, so I'm going to have to really think about and plan how I lay all this out. And that's before... I even have the smoke um, device, which will probably sit in between the two drive motors. Well, it does sit in between the two drive motors here and yet another uh, box of tricks to go with that. So um, I'm really happy the, the way that's gone today. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna install the gun elevator so we can get this barrel into the tank. Um, and then I'll, I'm gonna, I, I may decide to put the mud guards on at this stage or I'll wait until I've done a bit of a road test with it before I do that because once the mud guards are on it's going to be a bit tricky to um, get to the area where you adjust the tension on the tracks on the idle wheel so that's um, really I mean it's incredible to think that you know here we are it's actually almost well it's coming to life um, so I'm going to do the do the turret and then um, we put it all back together and then decide whether or not I'll do a quick road test and then obviously the next stage will be um, getting the mud guards on at some point and uh, doing all the weathering on the tank and awaiting the delivery of the smoke device recoil and uh, sound um, but until then um, what we'll do is we'll crack on and get the turret set up oh I'll do the turret rotation as well so we get that rotating round um, and the gun elevating so um, I'll just get everything back to where it was and uh, I'll be back real soon Right, so um, I've gone ahead and I've installed the main turret gear ring, which is this thing here. Um, and when you previously build, if you're, not doing, if you're not doing the option packs, which I find a bit odd, but anyway, if you're not, um, you, you, you won't have to worry about this. Uh, but you would have put these three main tall fixings in previously, and they have to go in these three locations because of the way the turret sits on them and the whole casting and everything else. So they have to go in these three locations. So if you're doing the option pack, you're going to have to remove those, uh, which I've done. Um, but what I did is I removed them, but I also marked on there. So I knew, I don't know if you can see that on pen mark there. So I knew exactly which location to put them back into. And then all you have to do is there's three additional spaces that you just make sure you equally space around to make sure that this ring has got no give in it. So when it's using or rotating with the turret motor, there's no bend in it or giving it. So that's it, really straightforward. Um, I didn't think there was a need to film that. Um, so now the next thing is that we're gonna have to install the um, main turret motor itself. And that comes, that gets secured onto a bracket, which goes onto, which fixes into this. Um, and we've got the main turret itself, which this gear mechanism is gonna have to be relocated or removed to be able to get it installed. Now this bracket gets fixed too, let me see. We've got M412 countersunk, so we need two of those. Yes, and they're in here somewhere. So yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable that I've got, uh, you know, I just have to kind of pinch myself that we've got this far um, already. Um, and it seems such a long time ago that uh, you know I unpacked it um, and was very excited about unpacking it and I must admit even back then I just thought I don't I can't remember I, mean, I don't quite know how this is going to sort of pan out um, and anyway it's panned out very well and I'm very pleased so we're going to need a couple of nuts as well so that's that so let me go away there um, yeah so what we probably do is let me think we'll probably install this and then We'll install, no, I'll do, so what we do is we'll install the, the motor itself on here first. 
So in order to do that, we're going to have to remove this main gear mechanism here. There's a little grub screw that you just undo. And that slides off like that. Um, that then, just make sure we're doing the right way. And that then goes this way around. You can see that. And that gets secured. That should fit in there, does it? Might need to be cleaned up. The old deburring tool come to the rescue again. You want this to be a really nice snug fit. Hang on. Make sure I'm doing it the right way, yes. It needs to be a snug fit, and it is now. Fits over there lovely. Uh, just line up those holes. And these fixings, little M310s, just need it a little bit. Hmm, that's not, as I, as I keep saying on this uh, video, it is warts and all, so you can see that Again, just there uh, we go. That's going to go in now. As soon as this camera goes on, everything just goes wonky. Let's see if we can get this one in. I don't have to do this, but I might have to drill these holes out a little bit to allow me to get these fixings in. Is that going in? No. I'm going to have to drill those holes out because I just don't want to line up. You won't be able to see that on the camera, but I just won't want to line up. So uh, I'll do that and I'll be back shortly. So that's it just uh, just had to ream them out a little bit um anyway no harm done it's all done now and we'll just get that back on there and realign up the holes that looks a lot better now doesn't take a lot just just a half a millimeter there it goes perfect it's going in lovely now now with this i am gonna Put a bit of thread locker on this because the amount of vibration that this this gets or undergoes uh, it's gonna it's gonna take some battering so i'm just gonna get them in a little bit and then i'll just squeeze a little bit of thread locker in there that's worked um didn't need a lot just needed to be ringed out a little bit so now these line up beautifully and yes, they go. They're going in nicely. So what I'll do with these as well, I'm just going to wind them in a little bit, and then um, when uh, when they're in a little bit more further, or when they're all in a little bit, I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of thread locker on these because this this is going to take an, a lot of abuse. It's going to be operating quite a lot, and I don't want it wearing loose. Um, I had that on the Tiger um, and managed to resolve that, but what will happen is that this 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 can come loose and it just affects the meshing with the gear and the ring. So a um, little bit of thread locker required. That's that. And then just send them home. It's almost there now. I know I keep saying it, but I can't believe we're actually at this stage already. Incredible. I will say this kit has been incredible. I really enjoyed every moment of the build. Well, not every moment of the build, but most of it. 
you remember some of the some of the parts were quite frustrating those grills for a start they were frustrating uh, the wheels are always fun there's a lot of fixings on the wheels but the rest of it has just been absolutely incredible really thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it so now that's back on we can we can put the um, the gear mechanism back on obviously go on the flat side where the grub screw is that's on there I'm just going to let it off a little bit And that positions itself. What we do is we'll just get it to mesh with that. You can see that. So I'll lift, just lift this up for you. So you just want to get that when you're positioning this. You want to get that to mesh with the gears. Now I don't know if you can see, but these have got slotted holes, so that allows you to do some adjustments. So what I'm going to do is we'll get this in. And then I'll get some power to it and we can do some meshing and see how well or how much adjustment is required. That's about it, I think. Yeah. And these fixings come in from this side. another bit that's going to have to be touched up just hold that spin a nut onto that just going to put it in very loosely at the moment Once we've got it meshed and we're happy, I'll, I'll put some thread locker on it and then send it home nice and tight. That's in there. Like that. Now we've got to make sure that that is really nicely positioned. So I'm going to start there. start of a 10 so that's in but I'm not saying that it's fixed for sure so what we're going to do now is going to have to get some some power to this and then we'll be able to do some meshing so I'll just do that and I'll be straight back right so um, got it connected up got it powered up got motor control B is now plugged in temporarily uh, this is all connected up and um, we're going to start meshing so basically what I'm doing here is I'm just going to rotate full circumference Hopefully you can see that spinning on the camera. I'm just looking for any slippages, any odd noises. So far so good. accidentally kicked the tracks off then I uh, started the, the drive motor because I still haven't calibrated this uh, handset yet and we are just in the testing stage now you can't do this I don't think you can do this properly on the tank so I mean the leads are long enough to be able to do this I'm actually quite pleased with that a couple of more so I'm gonna now just just gonna mark that so we know we've got a full rotation so there that's brilliant we'll go all the way back what you're listening for is any like, metal grinding 
uh, where the gears are not meshing properly with the, the, the main ring. I can't hear anything like that at all. All I can hear is just a beautiful mechanical sound. Fairly confident now that this will turn that massive turret. I mean, the weight that, uh, that the weight that's on that turret is incredible, and this little motor, this tiny little motor, has got the strength to turn it. Incredible. I think this is what sums up why Armatech are so good. Not just the quality of the build of the kit, but the electronics they supply you. I mean, it's an expensive kit, but this is why. Uh, it's just incredible. There's nothing, none of these components are manufactured in any cheap way whatsoever. And you just have, when you handle them and operate them, you just know their quality. You have to look after them and maintain them. Of course you do, like anything. But yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So that's that done. We can disconnect that for now. And then we'll go on and do the gun elevator. So I've actually run out of time for today's session, so I haven't gone and done the elevator. Um, but we you know we've done quite a lot today. We've tested all the, uh, the we've tested the drive motors, we've tested the uh, the elevator and the turret rotation motor. I've installed the turret rotation motor and I've meshed it together. I'm really really pleased with how that works. We've got the tracks on and running really nicely. Really really pleased how that's uh, come about. Um, the, I have gone ahead and installed this sort of mounting bracket here, which will eventually take the um, elevator, gun elevator and the recoil. And I've just installed the, the wiring loom just to keep it out of the way. And as you can see, this is the bit that this very clever little sort of um, spinny roundy thing, I think I'm going to call it, um, allows the turret to do a full 360 degree rotation uh, without to twisting the wires up so very very clever from Armatech um, I've only installed that so it's out of the way and in my next session I will go ahead and do the elevator um, I'm not sure if I have the smoke and recoil packs by that stage um, but if I have I will go ahead and obviously install them I think I'm a couple of weeks away from getting those um, but what we will do I'll probably do is road test the tracks and the power you know, the, the, the sort of drive motors so I'll, I'll leave it as it currently is, disconnect the turret drive um, and take this thing off the ramp, take it for a little spin just to make sure it's operating all right and there's no more adjustments to be made. And once I'm happy with that, I will be putting the mud guards on. I know I keep saying I will be putting them on, but they will be going on. And once they're on, we can then start weathering the whole tank, um, even ahead of the smoke device arriving and all the other pack packs. And it's almost there. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, we haven't got long to go now before I finish this amazing kit. Uh, I hope you go back and sort of see the beginning of the build and even go back and look at my Tiger videos. Um, and for all your comments and all your support, I can't tell you how much that I appreciate that. So it's uh, for me, it's goodbye and I'll see you again soon. It's Tony and I'm nearly finished building my M26 Armatech tank. Thank you.